In this last movie, you'll finish off texturing the scene with the help of a free downloadable utility that will help you design Substance Maps interactively. Substance Maps and 3ds Max were originally developed by a company called Allegorithmic. Using a web browser, go to the Allegorithmic page at www.allegorithmic.com. On the Products page, choose the Player product. This is a free utility that will simplify your workflow as you work with Substance Maps. Download the application and install it on your system. Start the application and load a Substance file. Use the Stone01 file you worked with in the last movie. You get two feedback windows, one in 2D and one in 3D. You can orbit around the 3D view using Alt Middle Mouse button just like in 3ds Max. Adjust the parameters, for example, the rock amount value to see the effect in real time. Play with other sliders such as rock size or shape shift. Try editing color information like saturation, luminosity and others. The advantage, of course, is that you get immediate feedback to what variations you want the map to have. You can also see the other channels contained inside the Substance file, such as Normal, Specular, Bump, Height and Displacement. The difference between Height and Displacement is that the Height map is not affected by the Relief Balance slider, but the Displacement map is. When you're done, you can proceed to 3ds Max in a couple of different ways. One way is to extract bitmaps from the Substance Player and lead a conventional workflow. You can choose an image type that suits you, an image resolution, and a folder where to save the extracted files. And ultimately use these extracted images in the proper channel on a material that you design in 3ds Max. The other method is to simply apply a Substance Map in 3ds Max, load the same substance you loaded in the player, and then all you need to do is duplicate the values you end up with into the Slate Material Editor in 3ds Max. However, and as explained in the last movie, Substance Maps handle gamma differently from bitmaps. Ensure you add a color correction map at the diffuse level and set the lightness advanced gamma contrast to 0.5 to 0.55. This will get you close to the display in the player, although you can adjust other color correction values as well. With that in mind, go back to the Fuji house and take a look how you can design its textures. You will experiment with a substance map for the roof. In the player, load the old painted plank substance. Play with the values until you get a look that you like. In 3ds Max, create a material base on the same substance. Apart from the diffuse channel, wire the normal and bump channels as you have learned in the last movie.
Do not forget to add a color correction map to adjust the gamma correction. Render the scene to view the results. Keep on experimenting with the player and transposing the values to the Slate Material Editor. Try the cane substance for the walls. Create a material for this substance in 3ds Max and apply it to the walls. Add the normal and bump maps of the material as you have done before. In this particular case, you will need to rotate the map 90 degrees for the canes to run horizontally. With substance maps, you only need to do this once. With a conventional workflow, you'd need to rotate every image you created for the various channels. Add a color correction map and adjust gamma correction and render the scene. Keep on working on your scene. Try the wood white cedar map for the floor, railings and wall frames. Use the asphalt substance for the steps in the garden. Feel free to experiment with other substances if you feel like it. This concludes this three-part series on how to work with substance maps. We hope you found this instruction useful.